So today I just wanted to make a very quick video about AstroPad on the iPad Pro, mine's the 10 inch, and the 2018 MacBook Pro, mine is the one with the Radeon 550X. So um, pretty, I'll say like high spec hardware, and I really wanted to just get all this hardware because I was really interested to try out AstroPad Pro Studio. Um, I've heard good things about it, but I haven't really heard a lot of tests when it came to applications like ZBrush. So I went out, got all the hardware myself, and I wanted to test it out to see like what the workflow was like. And man, was I really impressed by it. It is awesome. Um, I'm going to sort of put the camera here now so you can see me working on the iPad. And I'm going to talk over that and go over uh, just my experience with AstroPad Studio and why I think that this is just like so cool to work on and I honestly can't believe how well it works, especially on Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna be doing it all right now. So let's talk about the performance first on AstroPad Studio. Um, it's awesome. It's really good. It's super snappy. It's just as good as if you were running on a Mobile Studio Pro or even the HP ZBook X2 or Cintiq. The, the snappiness of the cursor is just great. I feel no lag at all. And I can't believe this honestly because I was never a big fan of this uh, piece of application on the iOS store. This Duet Display, I'd used them all years ago and I just kind of discarded them thinking that they would never get there because they're streaming the media to the iPad and there's always going to be a bit of a disconnect and a big lag and it'll never get there. I can confidently say I think it's there. This is crazily um, really just like on point with you know the cursor, um, the, the speed, uh, just everything in general is really impressive. I haven't even used the USB mode on this because I don't think I ever will need to because of how quick this responds. So I give at least the performance on this a thumbs up. I've used it for a day. So give, take with that, you know, what you will. But um, let's focus on the application function here. Now, if you have used a touchscreen device with, uh, with Windows on it, or anything that, uh, you know, relies on hotkeys in general, you need a keyboard to your side to work on those hotkeys. Um, unfortunately in Windows, when you have modifier keys up with using a software like Tablet Pro or, or anything, you can't press the modifier keys down and move the cursor around at the same time. You have to pick between the two. It's either the cursor is touching the screen on Windows 10 or a modifier key is being pressed down. But you can't simultaneously do them, so you have to use toggle keys on everything. Um, with AstroPad, you don't have to do that. You can hold the buttons down and they work. And this is really how you would expect it to work. But it's just important to note that if you are using a sort of a touch interface on Windows 10, you can't do anything like this. You can't have on-screen keys. They have to be hardware keys or they have to be toggle functions or just individual clicks. Because like I said, they have to be separate keys. So right away, this is a huge improvement. Um, I don't really like having to hold toggle the keys for the most part. I like pressing the keys when I'm using them and then letting them go. You know, naturally kind of the, the way you would do things here. And it works. It works just the way you'd expect it to. And that's really cool. So the implementation of these hotkeys is great. Uh, they're very customizable. You can edit them to be basically anything. Um, any keystroke you want to add in here, you can add it in here, and uh, I'll just give you an example here. Uh, you just kind of make a name and enter keystroke, and that's all there is to it. You can do dupli you can do uh, simultaneous keys if you want or anything like that. I don't have too much of a need for that, at least with what I'm doing right now. So you set them up, and then you put them on the side, and then you hit the buttons. It's really just... In its simplicity and lack of, you know, advanced configuration, and when I say lack of advanced configuration, you don't need to do a lot on the side to get everything to work. It just works. So I'll just kind of sculpt around a little bit and show you um, what it just kind of looks like using the device and what you can expect in terms of performance 
on the device because I'm sure that's what most of you are kind of wondering. So let's just do a very, very basic skull because that's really all I can do in ZBrush. So that is what we are going to do today. And as you can see, it's like, man, it's just working. There's, there's no issues or anything like that. It's just kind of going the way you'd expect it to. And I know it's just like, oh, well, you know, isn't that what you should just think it would do? Well, if you've used Duet Display or other applications or anything on Windows, it just doesn't work as well as it works on this. So let's just um, get rid of that. Do something here. And so what I also think is cool is that your finger still works on the screen, of course. So when I want to use a brush, I just close it and then I hit my brushes right here and then I'm in my brushes. I don't even need a separate key for it. I know you could do that, but it just, um, it all kind of works together so well with this program and I'm really surprised. And let me just go into the uh, trim rectangle. And modifying, like pressing two keys at once, works. So, not going to have any issues there either, which is something that I was worried about at first, but, you know, no need to be worried about it, I guess, because it works just fine. So, trim dynamic and just kind of start to sculpt here. Sorry I'm not talking much, but um, I feel like most of the aspects of this are pretty self-explanatory, I guess, after watching them. So we'll just like point out, I don't know, the eyes here. Inside of the head, I guess. And then the cheekbones. Those aren't very good cheekbones, but you know what I'm trying to do, hopefully. So I definitely don't always know what I'm trying to do. But I don't want to bring this on too long. I just want it to be known that this works really well. And I can't wait to just sort of lay in my bed uh, at night and just mess around on ZBrush on my iPad and have there be no keyboards I need or anything. I could take this on the go and use this at a workshop if I went to a workshop or something. I could, I could use this primarily as my sculpting device and I'd be completely satisfied with it. So, uh, I'll cut things off here. I know this hasn't been like the most informative video or anything like that, but um, yeah, I just think uh, this is cool, and you should give it a try if you can do it. See ya.